The first functional semiconductor in history has been produced by Georgia Institute of Technology researchers using graphene, a single sheet of carbon atoms bound together by the strongest known bonds. Semiconductors are essential parts of electrical devices because they are materials that in certain situations carry electricity. The group's innovation opens the door to a novel approach to electronics. Hello and thanks for tuning in. Before we go any further, please take a moment to support us by liking this video. Subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you always know when we put out new videos. And remember, sharing is caring. Okay, let's get back to it. With 10 times the mobility of silicon, this innovation offers a substitution for silicon which is reaching its limits in contemporary electronics. Because of its special qualities, such as its resilience and capacity to withstand high currents without overheating, graphene is perfect for use in electronic applications. The finding entails opening a band gap in graphene, making it a semiconductor and possibly transforming nanoelectronics. Epitaxial graphene may represent a paradigm leap in electronics and open the door to new breakthroughs in quantum computing. Their discovery coincides with the era in which smaller and quicker electronic devices are pushing silicon, the raw material used to make almost all modern electronics to its breaking point. Walter De Heer, Georgia Tech's Regent Professor of Physics, oversaw a group of scientists in Atlanta, Georgia and Tianjin, China, who created a graphene semiconductor that can be processed using standard microelectronic techniques. This is a prerequisite for any feasible silicon substitute. The main obstacle that had been impeding graphene research for decades and the reason why many people believed graphene electronics would never function was overcome by the hair and his team. The essential electrical characteristic that enables semiconductors to turn on and off is referred to as a band gap. A band gap was absent from graphene until recently. Earlier in his career, the hair began investigating carbon-based materials as possible semiconductors. In 2001, he switched his focus to two-dimensional graphene research. At the time, he was aware of graphene's potential in electronics. Our motivation came from the desire to incorporate three unique characteristics of graphene into electronics, he stated. It is a very strong material that can withstand very high currents without overheating and disintegrating. When the hair and his colleagues discovered how to use specialized furnaces to manufacture graphene on silicon carbide wafers, they made significant progress. They created a single layer known as epitaxial graphene, which develops on silicon carbide crystal phase. The researchers discovered that upon adequate synthesis, the epitaxial graphene formed a chemical link with the silicon carbide and began to exhibit semiconducting characteristics. They continued to refine the material over the next 10 years, first at Georgia Tech and then in cooperation with colleagues at Tianjin University in China's Tianjin International Center for Nanoparticles and Nanosystems. Together with Lien Ma, the institution's director and a co-author of the paper, they here established the center in 2014. One may ask how they managed to pull this off. Graphene is a semi-metal in its natural state, not a metal or a semiconductor. All transistors and silicon electronics function by applying an electric field to a substance with a band gap, which causes the material to turn on and off. How to turn graphene on and off such that it functions like silicon was the main unanswered topic in graphene electronics development. Yet, significant manipulation of a semiconducting material is required to create a working transistor which may degrade the semiconductor's characteristics. The team needed to measure the platform's electrical properties without causing any damage in order to demonstrate that it might work as a viable semiconductor. 
Doping is the process of adding atoms to graphene that donate electrons to the system in order to test the material's conductivity. None of the material's qualities were harmed in the process of working. According to the team's measurements, the mobility of their graphene semiconductor is 10 times higher than that of silicon. To put it another way, extremely little resistance exists between the electrons and their movement, which leads to faster computation in electronics. According to the hair, it's similar to driving in a gravel road as opposed to a freeway. It's more effective, doesn't overheat, and enables higher speeds to enable faster electron mobility. With electrical qualities significantly superior to any other 2D semiconductor under development, the team's product is now the only two-dimensional semiconductor with all the required properties to be employed in nanoelectronics. According to Ma, graphene didn't have the right band gap and couldn't switch on and off at the correct ratio, which has long been a problem in graphene electronics. Numerous people have attempted to solve this over the years using a range of techniques. Our approach closes the band gap and represents a major step toward the realization of graphene-based electronics, she added. Because of its special qualities, Epictasia graphene has the potential to revolutionize the electronics industry and open the door to a whole new technological possibility sphere. Quantum computing requires the material to enable the use of electrons quantum mechanical wave characteristics. We have long had the desire to work on graphene electronics, the rest was just logistics, the hair stated. We had to learn how to work with the material, refine it more and then qualify its qualities. That was a very, very lengthy process. The hair claims that the arrival of yet another generation of electronics is nothing out of the ordinary. Wires and telegraphs existed before silicon and vacuum tubes existed before that. In the history of electronics, silicon is just one step forward, graphene may be the next. This reminds me of the Wright brothers' moments the hair remarked. They constructed an aircraft that had 300 foot vertical lift. However, the doubters questioned why the world needed flight when it already had swift boats and trains. Yet, they persisted and that marked the start of a technology that can transport humans across vast distances. And that concludes today's video. Do let us know what you think about today's discussion in the comment section below. And you can support this channel by liking the video, subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you'd always know when we put out new content. And remember, sharing is caring. Take care and see you in the next video.